run to the Science Fiction Channel, and that's absolutely correct. But we have just learned from the distributor of The Prisoner that as soon as that run is over, we'll have the opportunity to repurchase the series once again. Tonight, therefore, is very much an experiment. We're asking the question, should we buy this series again? We have shown The Prisoner before, but many people keep saying to us, please air it again. I haven't seen every episode yet. I'm videotaping every episode or for whatever. The Chimes of Big Ben is an interesting piece of the prisoner puzzle. Here, for instance, we're given a clue as to why our hero resigned. A matter of conscience was how it was phrased. And here we begin to see just how far the village's tentacles reach, even as far as the prisoner's old home office. Furthermore, the interplay between the prisoner and Leo McKern's number two foreshadows their future actions in the two final episodes. For those of you who've seen these episodes, their admission that they are both prisoners and both know too much take on much deeper meaning. And such lines as, you're a fool, number six, and I'm going to escape, come back, and wipe this place off the face of the earth take on a prophetic tone. The series is indeed cyclical, and knowing the outcome adds to the depth and the enjoyment of further viewings. In comparison to later episodes, for example, we can realize what a simple trick was played on the prisoner in this charade of an escape. He won't be fooled by such an unsophisticated ploy again. This idea of the increasing sophistication of the plots concocted to break the prisoner was one of the main things we looked at when reshuffling the broadcast order of the episodes. You see, the methods used to disorient our hero have been relatively simple so far, especially when compared with later plots. And several times now we've been made aware of the fact that the village rulers do not want to damage the prisoner permanently. But just as his escape attempts are frustrated, so are the various efforts to win him over. This stalemate must inevitably lead to increasingly aggressive attempts to break our hero, as well as increasingly sophisticated uses of psychology and technology to accomplish this. The only winners in this cat and mouse game are the viewers, who are thus treated to a 17-hour movie in which tension mounts with each passing hour. Another of the basic themes we analyzed during our episode shuffling was that of trust versus betrayal. We asked ourselves, who does the prisoner trust? And what happens when he trusts someone? In Arrival, he puts his trust in an old friend, Cobb, but that trust is quickly betrayed. In Dance of the Dead, he's less inclined to trust his old workmate, Dutton, but when he depends on him as a character witness, he finds only a lobotomized fool. In Checkmate, he thinks he's discovered a surefire way to screen fellow prisoners from village warders, and then places his trust in a group of villagers he believes to be sincere. But due to his own arrogance, they mistake him for a captor and betray him. So we can see that the prisoner has systematically eliminated everyone in the village as worthy of his trust. In the chimes of Big Ben, he's taken this idea one step further. If he can't trust anyone in the village, perhaps he can rely on a new arrival, someone who's in the same boat as himself, so to speak. But once again, the village is six steps ahead of him, and he is once again betrayed. This theme of trust and betrayal is one which is addressed throughout the entire series. Over the next few weeks, we'll see the prisoner lose his trust in his former superiors, and in The Schizoid Man, he'll be manipulated into a situation where he won't even be able to trust himself. Such an attitude has led a few viewers to label the prisoner as antisocial or paranoid. But after seeing his faith in others diminish so frequently, his suspicions do seem justified. It's not an aberration at all, but in effect, good sound judgment based on past experience. And even though his attitude might appear antisocial, the position of trusting no one is a flexible decision, which he can and does reverse when the situation warrants it. And in keeping with the cyclical nature of the series, our hero does eventually rekindle his ability to trust. The cycle is completed and ends not exactly where it began, but at a more refined, more knowledgeable place. Not the starting point of a circle, but a higher turn up a spiral. In next week's episode, Free For All, the prisoner continues to learn startling lessons about life in the village. And along the way, we'll be treated to McGowan's darkly humorous views on free elections. 
And of course, I'll be on hand to cast my vote and to pass on some details about the many prisoner fan clubs still in operation. So until next time, I'm Scott Appel, and I'll be seeing you.